thank you for having me. I appreciate that, the opportunity to come out here. It's the first time I've been out here, and it, it is a little bit uh, different. <laughs> Say that is if you're not used to it. Uh, this also is my first presentation with my official new title, so that's kind of cool because that's the first time I've seen it written that way. I've always been the director of wellness, but I have acquired recreation. I've always been in recreation. That's what my degree is. So that has come under my umbrella, which makes me pretty excited. Um, I'm definitely a person that I feel that we need to play more, move more, um, lighten up a little bit more, because that plays into our well-being. And it's all about um, us being as well as we possibly can. So this presentation is focused on movement. And truly our bodies are meant to move. That's the way we were created. We were not created to sit all the time. And if you look at our ancestry, they rarely sat with their, what we had to do to survive basically. But we've changed. Technology, society, everything has changed. And it has brought us into this forward fold position and also very, much not moving. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about. Hopefully do it a little bit fun. Um, get you thinking that you can get the excuse of you don't have time out of your mind because that usually, it doesn't matter how old you are, college students, parents, grandparents, the number one reason why people feel that they can't ac exercise is what? You don't have time because our lives are crazy busy. But with, throughout this presentation, hopefully you'll see that you actually do have time and do it in a fun way. I did put a handout. If you haven't gotten the handout, it was over by the um, sign-in sheet. So if you didn't get one, if you just raise your hand and someone can pass it down the way. Is this it? It is, yep, you can use that one. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna have you just take a little activity of yourself. Because one of the things you have to do is do a self reflection of what you do right now so then you can just establish your baseline and then improve it. So think about yesterday, which I know for us, like even me, I'm like yesterday, what did I do yesterday? But all I want you to do is I gave you some time blocks. So if you look at the handout, it tells you from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. I sat this many hours. So I want you to just take a moment and reflect and think about your day and write the hours that you feel that you sat in those time frames and then add them up. I took a rough guess of how early you get up, but I'm finding that you probably are up much earlier than what that says. <laughs> so. so everybody have a roundabout idea? How many hours out of 24 hours did you sit or lay down? Just throw numbers out there. So uh, who was around 18 hours that you sat or laid down? Nobody? 20? Were you more than that? Oh, you were up than that. OK. Um, so 18 hours or above, that is how much time that we are actually sitting or laying down. Because a lot of times when we go home, what do we do? We crash. And crashing usually means we're laid out on the couch, recliner, whatever it may be. Um, and you also have to think, I, I'm just making the assumption just because my commute out here, a lot of time you're spent driving, right? You're commuting an hour every day, an hour and a half, whatever it may be, you're sitting. Anytime you're taxiing children around, you're sitting. So all of that adds up and truly the way that our bodies are meant to be is in this position right here. And over time, you may feel it, and as we go through this and talk about some of these different things, you're gonna make notice of what your body has, what's happened to it over time. So that's kind of one of those, uh, hopefully like, wow, I didn't realize that kind of thing. Um, the next thing I want you to do is, I want you to rate, to see this top box on there? There's one on the left. I just want you to kind of circle how you feel right at this moment. Everybody good with that? Okay, so now is when we start to move. So I everybody stand up and just push your chairs back a little bit. And typically I would have some music, but I didn't think I could bring my phone, so I didn't bring my phone with me. Um, so just have a little bit of space around you. We're not going to do anything too crazy. Uh, so I want you to start by just basically taking a seat and standing up. 
taking a seat and standing up. If you want to actually sit in your chair, you can sit in your chair. Everybody seems to have sensible shoes on except for me. They probably should take them off. Feeling okay? All right, I am going to take them off for this one. So now I want you to do a set of jumping jacks. If you don't want to jump, you can just take one foot out to the side. So you can jump if you want to jump, or you can take one foot out to the side. Don't hit your neighbor. Good, 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 good. All right, now sit down again. Take a seat. Stand up. No, 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 no. You're not sitting, sitting. Uh -huh. See, usually I would put push-ups in here too, but I won't do that to you today. It's just not the exact good part. Okay, one more time, jumping jacks. And if you can't jack side, you can jack front and back. You can dance if you wanted to. That's fine. Okay, now go ahead and take a seat. So now what I want you to do is that same exact survey that you just took, I want you to mark if your feeling has changed. So did you go from more, t from tired to awake, whatever it may be, did it change at all? Is anybody taking some big, deep, big, deep breaths? How long do you think we just did that? Not even. A minute and a half. About a minute and a half. So you have one minute and a half of exercise in your day already. So who did change? Did anybody change? And be honest, you don't have to say, no, I didn't change, but what did you change from? Oh, from awake to tired, you went back the other way? <laughs> Physically tired, yeah. Anybody else? Feel more energy? So the one thing that I hope that little short experiment showed you is that physical activity changes the way that our body reacts to everything. It changes our brain. It gets more oxygen flowing. It gets more blood flowing. It starts to make us laugh. So most of you are smiling when you did that. You may be thinking, this lady is crazy making us do this, but you're laughing. Laughing sends endorphins through our body. So all of those things have immediate chemical reactions that make us feel better. Uh, with college students, but it's really just with anybody, anxiety and depression is pretty prevalent. Exercise should be one of those components that you use in order to help that because it automatically starts to make us feel better. There's a whole series of research on that. And you just did a little bio experiment on yourself. So that's one thing I hope that you realize that was a minute and a half and it made you change how your outlook was. Now let's kind of switch over to sitting because we often sit. How many of your jobs involve sitting? Majority. And that's pretty common, right? In our, the way that our society has moved in our professions, we sit a lot. There is a whole new um, slew of research out there that is saying that even if you exercise, if you do an hour, whatever it is, if your day is composed of mostly sitting, your risk for heart disease and different diseases is still pretty high. They want you to move because again, our bodies are meant to be here, not where you're at right now. So a couple of the things that sitting does is it decreases the muscles that we have to use. So when we sit, how do we typically sit? <laughs> like this? I mean, it, and I'm not picking on anybody. It's just what we do. I do the same thing. I sit a lot. And I'm a director of wellness and recreation, <laughs> and I still sit a lot. So automatically, our muscles kind of take this hiatus from having to work, especially our core muscles, because when we sit, we don't use our core much. We kind of just like let it hang. Um, this forward fold in our shoulders, we often are like this and not even realizing it. So it could start out very gradual, like it's just this little rounding where our chest gets really tight and our back stretches out. And then as we get older, have you seen individuals get older? What happens? We just start, gravity starts taking over. We have to do something to combat that because of the way that we constantly, our bodies are not in an upright position. 
I talked about the abdominal muscles. They relax, they're never engaged. And if you have a very weak core, what do you tend to have problems with? Your back. So a lot of times, this is a unit. This whole thing is a unit. And I'm not talking about you have to have a six pack abs. That, that, is, that might be great, but most people cannot attain that. <laughs> um, but they need to be strong in order to hold your torso. There's a lot of weight from here to here. And if your core is not strong, again, what does it want to do? It's going to start to fold because you're, it can't hold your torso up. So we need that to be strong. It decreases your metabolism. So automatically when you sit, you use less muscle, your metabolism will start to go down. And metabolism allows us to have some of the foods that we probably enjoy. Um, if I ever did a nutrition talk, I definitely am a person of balance. I'm not really high on um, all Atkins or all protein or all this or that. I, I really think it's about being healthy and mindful of what you eat. Uh, but if your metabolism is not high, you cannot afford to eat that piece of cake. You're going to keep it. So you want your metabolism high, right? Because if, you know, if you're going to a celebration and you want to have a cupcake, you should be able to have a cupcake. That is not the way a lot of people think, so I'm not saying that's the right way. I'm just saying it's what I feel. Um, the other thing it does is it tightens up your hip flexors. Where are, does anybody know where your hip flexor muscles are? They are these muscles right here. They connect our torso to our legs. So all the muscles right in here, they're, they're a bunch of them, but the general term of them is called hip flexors. They do this. So if you think about it, when we're sitting, we're constantly like this, that means they're short. And again, if your hip flexors are really tight, they actually connect to your spine. Well, not your spine, but your vertebrae in the back. If they're super tight, back problems. So combine these being really tight, these being really weak, our back is a mess. And if your back is a mess, how is life? It is not fun because everything is this. So then we have back problems. We tend to then want to sit or lay down even more. And it becomes this little cycle. So you can do things to put some kind of barrier in that cycle, break it. And so I'm pretty sure we're going to break it in a minute. Um, the other thing it can cause is forward head tilt. So what is that? It's kind of the formal term. What do you think forward head tilt is? This. So your head kind of gets pushed out. And I, was t I teach a personal training class. I was telling my class, I was getting on them. I said, I want you to prevent text neck. And then a research study came out about it. I'm like, why? I was just not on, I wasn't fast enough to do that. But now you're seeing problems in very young people that are basically this forward head tilt because they constantly are like this. And that's how they walk. So, and our head is very heavy. And these muscles in the back are becoming really weak. These are becoming really tight. And they can't actually keep their ears over their shoulders, which is where it should be. Your ears should be over your shoulders. So we need to do things to put, like I said, this little break in there so we, it just doesn't happen. Because when our body becomes out of alignment, our head, our ears over our shoulders, shoulders over our hips, our hips over our knees, and our knees over our ankles, something gets out of whack and then something starts to hurt. And as things start to hurt, you probably have all been there in some way. So we want to make sure we do things to hopefully correct that. So we're going to stand up and sit down for one minute. So everybody stand back up. Pretty much what we just did, but I want you to pay attention to a few things. Everybody kind of stand in what they call anatomical position. So your hands kind of go up, palms face up. I want you to see, you can look at your neighbor, are your ears over your shoulders and are your shoulders over your hips? So are you standing up nice and tall? So what that means, if you're standing up tall, you automatically, what happens? And everybody has abs. There might be stuff over them, but everybody has them. So you can engage them. So what you kind of have to pretend is that you're pulling your entire torso as tight to your spine as you can. So shoulders are over, pull that torso in, and then have your feet a little bit wider than your hips. So then what we're gonna do is just trying to keep this upper body the same, take a seat and stand up.
Take a seat and stand up. And we're just gonna do this for one minute. A couple of other things to pay attention to is you don't want your knees going over your toes. What that means is you have to sit your fanny back further. So you have to stick your butt out and then stand up. Down and up, good. How's everybody doing? Can you feel your heart rate going up already? A little bit? This is gonna look great on video. <laughs> it's like I go up and I come down from the camera. Good, let's do eight more. How's everybody? Anybody have some jokes? This is when music is good. Two more. Good, all right, have a seat. So now we've done three and a half minutes of activity. Everybody's heart rate went up a little bit, but not too much. You may be sweating a tiny bit, but not too much yet. So let's go into the next one, and we're going to actually practice proper sitting. Yeah, <laughs> so um, do you guys have ergonomist? Ergonomist? I don't know if that's the right, right, right way to say that. Somebody that works with ergonomics here. Um, if you don't feel that your situation, like your office space, you really need to have somebody come in and help you. Because again, if your job is sitting a lot, you need to make sure you're sitting as proper as you possibly can. Because over time, that's going to cause problems. So right here, if you look at this person, uh, she's sitting with her bottom at the back of the chair and her hips and knees flexed at right angles. So when you're sitting, your hips should be flexed and your knees should be flexed and your feet flat on the floor. She has her back all the way up against the chair. That, that is a proper way to sit. If you want to work on your core strength, you scoot your hips forward so your back is not against the chair. But what that means is you have to engage your hips, or your hips, your abs. So I want to practice that because this is going to give you a little bit of an abdominal exercise that you could do at your desk. So everybody bring your back away from the chair. Both feet are flat on the floor. Sit, sitting up as tall as you can and your shoulders are back. And I just, again, want you to draw your abs in. And I want you to stay like that for the, for the next few slides. And I want, what we're going to do is to show you how that position is challenging. It's not something that's really easy to stay in. So kind of just hang out there a little bit. Um, if your chair is not in the right height for your computer screen, again, does everybody know where you should, your eyes should be looking if you have a computer screen and the height? So if you're not familiar with that, bring in your person that would help you set it up the correct way. Because again, you don't want this forward head tilt, so you don't want to be looking down at your screen and you don't want to be looking up at your screen. So you need to make sure that you're level with whatever you have to look at on a regular basis. And now people have multiple screens. Does anybody have multiple screens? Like you have like one in the middle and then two, two. It's the same thing. You shouldn't have one kind of up or down so your neck is constantly doing this. Because that also gives you little tracers and you don't want that part either. So everything should be level. So whoever that person is, I don't know who it is, they might be, get a lot of work after this presentation. All right, some other things, we're gonna practice these too. Is anybody a fidgeter? Actually, fidgeting, if you are a fidget person, I, I am a fidget, you can probably tell because my hands move a lot, you actually have a higher metabolism typically than people that do not fidget. Makes sense, right? Because when we fidget, what's happening? Some muscles moving, like something is moving. So if you're not a fidget person, you can just become one for 30 seconds every hour and tap your toes or wiggle your knees or wiggle your legs or whatever it is. And fidgeting will actually start to burn more calories. Is it going to burn 200 calories? No, <laughs> it's not. But you have to think of our daily life as accumulation. It's all about accumulation. And if at the end of the day we have accumulated burning off more calories than we consume, that's what we want. Because what happens when we consume more than we burn off? You start getting, <laughs> that's the good way to put it, I guess. We start gaining weight. It's just, it's the way that it is. 
Um, so you kind of have to just think about that. It's all about accumulation. How are your abs feeling? Anybody feel it? Yeah. How about your back? Yeah. Back, shoulders? So see, you've been sitting like that for maybe three minutes, and you can tell it's starting to use muscles that aren't used to doing what they're actually supposed to do. And it's just training. You have to train your body to sit the right way. You have to train your body to stand the right way because our bodies want to cheat. They just do. They're going to want to do something the easiest possible way that they can do it. So if it uses less energy, what are you going to do? Start to do this because it's easier, even though over time it can be a detriment to us. But we don't think that way a lot. And a lot of times it's just being mindful. We don't actually think about it at all. So um, another thing you can do is put your printer outside of your office. So you have to get up. So my printer is not in my office, and I have to get up out of my desk. I didn't plan that either. That was just the way that it was when I got there. But it makes me get up probably at least once an hour to have to go get something, come back. Made a mistake, have to go get something, come back. So that is something if that's an option for you. Definitely the option for you is that you can park far away. You have a really big parking lot outside. Um, you can park in the corners of that parking lot and walk yourself in. Um, I do that every day too because even though I am recreation and wellness and I do exercise on a regular basis, this week because we've had graduation and all this stuff, I exercised on Monday, haven't done anything, and I'll teach tonight. So that's only twice a week, which for me is, is not enough. Um, but I park as far away from my office as I can every single day. And like today, I had to walk out to that car three times. I will have to. So again, think about it as accumulation. You want to accumulate time on your feet. Um, you can be the person that runs errands for your office. You know, again, depends on your job. That might not be something you can do. But if it gets you out of your environment, you have to also think that helps your mental clarity. There's points that you need to take a break because you're not getting anything done anyway because you're just not there. So, you know, allow yourself to do that. Um, drink lots of water because what, when we drink lot water, what do we have to do? You have to go to the bathroom. When you have to go to the bathroom, what do you have to do? You have to get up. So it is, for one, physiologically, water is one of the best things that we can do for ourselves, and we live in a state of being constantly dehydrated. That's probably another presentation in itself. Dehydration makes your metabolism drop, um, so it, it does a lot to our body. So just by drinking water, you'll improve a whole bunch of things, and it gets rid of waste. We, you have to think of your body as a machine, and you need to give it all its tools that it can do what it needs to do. And if you're not drinking water, it can't get rid of the stuff that's in there. So it's a, it's a good thing to have happen. Because I'll have people say, well, then I have to go to the bathroom all the time. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's good. You want to have to do that. That's a bodily function we have to have. Um, and then you're going to set up an office exercise routine, which is part of what we've been doing today. So now here's the next one. This one you actually get to stay seated. So you are going to kind of pull away from your chair um, still take a seat, standing up nice and tall. And how many of you hold tension in your shoulders? A lot, a lot of people, this is where we hold tension. We often are like this and we don't realize it, or we're like this or however we are. So you need to pay attention to your back and shoulders. Simple routine for this is we're just going to work the shoulder joint in all different directions. Now, if you have a rotator cuff problem or anything like that, you know, just you know your body, and so if it hurts, I don't want you to do it. Um, but keep in mind, if you have, or I have rotator cuff problems, if you don't use it, it becomes unusable. Does that make sense? You have to, to use different pieces of your body, or they just become frozen. So, you know, you have to know that balance of how much and how hard. So the first thing we're going to do is just kind of do an up with our shoulders, up towards our ears. Pull them back, stick your chest out. Push them down so you reach your fingers to the floor, and then roll them forward. 
So you're gonna make this gigantic circle. And the whole time you're doing this, you should have your core as tight as you can. So your abs are nice and tight. Couple more. So now we're just gonna go in the opposite direction. So now you come up, pull forward, and go back. How's everybody doing with this? Good? Anybody feel good? <laughs> Actually feels really good. All right, so now let's do a little more of what would be strengthening of that. I want you to put your arms forward and I want you to pull your scapula apart. So the scapula on your back, I want you to kind of, if this is my back, I want you to pull them apart this way. So you stretch it forward as much as you can. And now I want you to kind of pretend you have a rope in front of you, hold on to it. Elbows pull back, squeeze your scapula as much as you can. Good, and now pull forward, stretch it apart, pull back, squeeze it together. So when we are pushing forward, we're stretching out our back muscles, which are surround our scapula. When we pull back, we're stretching out our chest and strengthening those back muscles. Couple more. So now we're gonna do the same thing going up. So arms here, you're gonna push up and then pull your elbows straight down. Push up, pull them straight down. And if that core decided it wanted to be lazy, pull it back in. Because a lot of times, what is our belly doing? Yep, wants to pop out. So again, it's just being mindful of it because a lot of times, like I said, your body's going to do what they feel is easy. So you have to just tell yourself, all right, pull it in, pull it in. Two more. Good, all right, shake it out. So now we've done almost five minutes. Five minutes of activity. Is anybody sweating? I'm sweating a little, but I'm also talking, so. All right, so let's talk about the difference between physical activity and exercise. They are different. So the, way, the, the easiest way to do this is physical activity is anything we do any day to just be mobile. How, our body's moving, it could be that we're going, walking through the grocery store, playing with our dog, whatever it is, we are just up and moving and doing something that is not sitting. Exercise is very structured. I'm going to the gym and going to work out for 30 minutes. I'm going to strength train. I'm going to this fitness class. So it is a structured activity that you plan. You need both. So you need to be physically active every day. At least 30 minutes every day, you should be doing something that your body is moving and not sitting. Exercise you need, and we're gonna go over the guidelines as well, because exercise pushes your body a little bit harder than <coughs> physical activity. So the stuff we're doing today is pretty manageable, right? That, that's considered physical activity. So the program I'm giving you is to get you into this 30 minutes every day of having some physical activity which if you already do something, that's a bonus because then you just added more, which again, think about the accumulation, it's good. Um, the structured exercise really is based on what you enjoy. Because if you, anybody who comes to me and says, I want to start an exercise program, my I, I want to start doing something three days a week, 45 minutes, tell me what to do. The first thing I ask them is what do you want to do? Because if you hate to run, and I say, you're gonna start running. Are you gonna run? Absolutely not. So it's, it, exercise has to be what you will do. Another thing people will always ask is, what time should I work out? Should I work out in the morning? Should I work out at noon? Should I work out at 9 p.m.? I'm like, when are you going to? You tell me when you're going to, that's when you're going to. Because again, it, it, if I say, I want you to start being at the 5 a.m. boot camp, and you have no desire to be at 5 a.m. boot camp, it doesn't matter if it's a fantastic class. If you're not going to show up, it, it doesn't do any good. So you have to figure out what do you like to do. Now like, we can define like. <laughs> you may not truly like it right away because it, it doesn't feel great the first little bit that you start. 
Um, but you have to get some type of enjoyment. Either you're with somebody and you're socializing, you're going for a walk and you're laughing and you're doing things like that, or you are meeting new people, or, or there's some kind of benefit from it. You feel good afterwards. It has to have that piece because at first, when you start an exercise, has anybody started an exercise program? How do you feel the, after that first few days? You're really sore. I enjoy being really sore, but a lot of people do not. They, they really, it feels very abnormal, which is actually a quite normal way to respond to it, to say, I didn't like that. So there's a balance. You can't all of a sudden say January 2nd, I'm gonna start running five miles, and then January 3rd, you can't even move. You know, that is not the way to start exercise. Um, but do you understand the difference between the two? And that you need a little bit of both. So let's talk about if you are going to start an exercise program, because it is pretty important that you stay safe. We all in this room are older. Unfortunately, it's just our clock keeps ticking, doesn't it? So we get to a certain age, and our bodies are just older. They're more seasoned. They've been through a lot more. And you have to pay attention to them a little bit more than what we had to when we were 20. When I was 20, if I wanted to go run five miles, usually I was over my soreness in a day. I mean, it really just doesn't stick around. Not anymore, that doesn't happen. So you have to be kind to yourself. Um, a couple of things that you wanna do is if you are just going to start beginning an exercise program, you need to have conversations with your doctor. You just need to let them know, listen, I'm starting to, I'm gonna start training for this. Is there anything I should be concerned about? The one caveat is some doctors are more versed in physical activity than other doctors. So you have to you know, understand that, but they still can tell you if your blood pressure is out of control, if you have diabetes, what kind of things that you should need to get in control before you start. So definitely have that conversation. Um, the best way to start, and there is a lot of research on this too, is gone are the days that we have to exercise for an hour every day. Short intervals are actually okay. And depending on how intense your short interval is, it might be better. Um, so that's just something to think about. So when I say a short interval, if you're on a bike and you're pedaling at whatever speed is comfortable for you, for 30 seconds, you make that speed uncomfortable. You go a little faster. Your heart rate goes up a little bit more. But then after 30 seconds, you bring it back down to being comfortable. Stay there for three minutes. All of a sudden, 30 seconds again. Make it a little harder. So that's what that interval means. You can do that with almost anything. Walking, you can jog for 30 seconds. Um, biking, you can do it on an elliptical. Um, you can do it with push-ups. So I know people have this aversion to push-ups, but it truly is one of the best exercises you can do. You don't have to do it on your toes. It doesn't matter. If you can't do it properly, you should do it on your knees. Um, but you could do push-ups for 30 seconds. Maybe you do two. Two is better than zero. And then you take a break for a minute. And then you do another 30 seconds. And then take a break for a minute, do another 30 seconds, you're done. You've just did push-ups for five minutes. Um, so you have to get out of the mindset that if I can't do 25 of something or 10 of something, that it doesn't give you benefit. If you can do two and you used to be able to do zero, that is a benefit. Um, I tell that with people with planks a lot too. So does everybody know what a plank is? So I often, when I start working with people, I make them do planks because typically they can only hold it for five seconds, maybe. Maybe they can't even hold it for five. But in a very short time, they all of a sudden can hold it for 30. And for one, how does that make you feel? It's like this accomplishment, like, oh my gosh, I could only do it for five seconds and now I can do it for 30? I'm making some progress. And it works every single muscle in your body. So does a push-up. If you do it on your toes, it absolutely, absolutely does, but even on your knees, it works almost every single muscle in your body. So you want to pick things that are better bang for your buck. We don't have a lot of time. So you do things like jumping jacks or push-ups or burpees, if you're a burpee person, um, because they work everything. 
The next thing is, is that you do need to wear good shoes. Everything starts from your feet. So if you don't have really good supportive shoes, that force goes all the way up your entire body. I'm not saying you have to have $100 shoes. There are $100 pairs of shoes that are not good shoes. But you have to have something that supports your foot that is not Keds or Sperry's or I, I don't know, something that's not a tennis shoe. So you have to have some pretty good shoes. Warm up before. So everything we've been doing, these shoulder rolls, like that's all considered warming up the body because you don't want to all of a sudden start just sprinting. That your body's not quite prepared for that. So you always want to start gradually, whatever you're doing. And then again, drink water. I can't tell you how much you need to drink water. I've already had like three of these today, or at least three of them. Um, and it keeps you from drinking other stuff. And sugar is a problem. Like again, if you can ever have somebody come in to do a talk on sugar, that it really is disrupting our body's ability to function the right way. All right, another one, knees up. So stand up. So this one, all you're gonna do is, you have to back yourself up so you don't hit your leg on the table, but I just want you to bring one knee up to your chest. You may or may not be able to grab it. You can just kind of lift it and bring it down. If you can grab it and you want to, you can do that. And you're just gonna pull that knee up. Again, standing up tall, so try to refrain from doing this. Shoulders stay up. Yeah. Is there a claws on this? Oh, you have a skirt on. You can do this. Yeah, you can do this one. Yeah, if you want to, you can go to the back as well. So you can kick your heels to your behind. Oh, you have a phone. Yeah. That's good. I don't want to walk all that. That's perfect. So why don't you try kicking your bottom? So switch your movement. So where do you feel like this when you're pull, pulling your heel to your bottom? Where do you feel it actually? In your quads and in these hip flexors? If these hip flexors are really tight, this movement is going to actually be challenging because it doesn't allow you to kick your heel to your bottom. If your back is super tight, this movement becomes a challenge because it's stretching your bottom and your back muscles out. Does anybody's heart rate go up? It goes up a little bit. All right, go ahead, have a seat. Big deep breath. That one did make me tired. So the other thing to think about is from the shoulder rolls or the, um, upper body that we did compared to that one, which one made your heart rate go up a little more? That one, right? Why? More muscles, bigger muscles. These muscles are gigantic. They use a ton of oxygen. So your heart rate has to go up because it has to deliver more oxygen to your muscles in order to work. Another thing to think about when you set up your physical activity because the bigger muscles that you work, the more Act bonus you get out of it. Metabolism goes up because it has to. So it's just something to think about when you're putting something together. This right here is we're kind of switching off of physical activity for a minute and just talking about exercise. Has anybody seen guidelines for exercise before? Is it? At some point in time, they have been around forever, but they have changed. Have you noticed like they change? It's like the American Heart Association, or when we get new research out there, it changes for a reason. It's not because people just decide, oh, I'm gonna change this today. It's typically because there's been research proven over and over that the guidelines need to be a little bit different. These guidelines are from American College of Sports Medicine. So it's ACSM, it's for short, um, and the American Heart Association, they, they all have similar guidelines, but not exactly the same. Um, for your cardiorespiratory, which organs does that pri primarily work? Heart and lungs. So we need our heart and lungs strong because it, just to do daily activities, if any of you have gone upstairs, and by the time you're up to the top of the stairs, you're like, oh man. Now that is always should happen. I'll kind of give you a little 
When you go from the bottom of the stairs to the top, your body doesn't have enough oxygen readily available to give it what it needs to get up those stairs, but it still has to get up the stairs, right? So every time you go upstairs, you will feel this because you need more. It has to get in there. Um, but it should get easier over time if you keep walking those stairs. So 150 minutes a week is what your goal for exercise would be. So that's that structured activity. I'm going for a walk every night or three nights a week at six, whatever it may be. Um, moderate intensity, 30 to 60 minutes, five days a week, or 20 to 60 minutes of vigorous. And I'm gonna give you some guidelines of what that means. Because a lot of people are like, what is moderate intensity? I don't, I don't get that. Or um, vigorous intensity. And they just see the word vigorous and they're like, uh-uh. <laughs> so, bonus is you don't have to do vigorous. But if you do vigorous, you don't have to do as much. So you have to decide what's going to be best for me. Can I work out five days a week or do I want to only work out three days a week with the structured activity? The resistance part is strength training. Our bodies start to atrophy after age 25. Like So our muscle mass just starts to decide it doesn't want to be there anymore. It gets smaller and smaller and smaller unless we do something to prevent it. You have to do something to prevent it. So strength training is as important as cardiorespiratory. So you need to do some kind of strength components. Some of the stuff we did today are considered strength, even though they also make your heart rate go up. So it's again, pick exercises that kind of give you best bang for your buck. If you do squats, you get cardio and strength. If you do push-ups, it's cardio and strength. So I'm not talking about resistance that you go in a gym and you're squatting and pushing 300 pounds. It, that's not what it has to be. If you enjoy that, that's fantastic. Yeah, will your muscles get bigger? Yes. But depending on where you are in your life, that is not a requirement. So you have to pick again what's going to be best for you. Um, you should train every major muscle group two to three days each week. So push-ups, almost every major muscle group, squats, wall sits, lunges, um, those kind of things are going to give you everything you need. There's, there's basically five exercises that you can do. And again, they, you could do them for 15 to 20 minutes. It's not that you have to do them for an hour and hour, hours and hours every day. So I probably should have you write that down. Squats. We did squats. Push-ups. Yes. No, go ahead. Yes. I have a question about the strength and flexibility. Mm -hmm. What is Pilates and yoga, or these combinations of the two? They can be combinations of the two, yeah. So the strength and flexibility? Mm -hmm. Well, it depends. So if you go to a vinyasa yoga class, and vinyasa means flow. It means constantly moving. It is all three. You get cardio, strength, and resistance, or cardio, strength, and flexibility. If you go to a slow, like a yin yoga, yin is really all stretching, flexibility. So the yoga even has different things. Pilates is very much cardio and strength. Depends on your Pilates instructor if they choose to stretch. But it is very much a strength in a cardio class. So those are the things that you pick what, again, you get everything in one package. I think yoga, honestly, is probably one of the best things that you could do. You have to have a good yoga instructor and you have to be mindful of your body's limits. But once you understand your body's limits, it gives you everything you need. Um, but people kind of shy away from it a lot of times because instructors are super yogis and they don't dial it back for people that aren't. And so you have to find the right instructor that works for you. And you have to be okay and you have to leave your ego at the door to say, I'm not going to look like that. And that's hard sometimes, you know, you're, I will never look like that when I'm doing yoga. Um, but that's okay. But, and yoga is kind of good too, because the lights are dark. <laughs> so you, you know, you don't have to see everybody. Um, but the flexibility part, so the strength is every muscle group in your body. You want to strength train in some way. Um, 
Oh, I didn't finish. What did I say? I said squats, push-ups, um, lunges, plank would be another one, and wall sit is another one. And the wall sit is that you have your back against the wall and you're sitting like you're in a chair. So if the wall was here, I slide down the wall to wherever I can and the wall is behind me and it supports me. And then you're in this position. And that really hits everything. That hits every strength muscle that you need to get yourself started. And then once you get started, you, you're wanting to learn more, there are millions of things that you can do out there. Flexibility, when you think about that, you want to stretch every joint in the body. So our shoulders are joints, right? So we need to move them in a way that they're meant to move. Um, so your flexibility for your shoulders, just think about every direction that it moves. And that's what you want to do. Stretching the muscles that work around that shoulder. Hips are another one. These hip flexor muscles, um, any direction around your hip, half of it is just moving it. You know, it's not, you don't have to necessarily keep it in a certain pose that long. You just need to move it because it doesn't get moved enough. And that will help. Your back is a joint, so you know arching your back like a cat and then pulling it up so you can do that flexibility exercise. If you Google flexibility, there is so much stuff that will come up. And usually pictures, they'll give you diagrams. And we're going to do a couple here pretty quick too. All right, let's talk about the moderate stuff and how to know your intensity levels. So on your worksheet, we're not going to do this part right now because it does take a little bit of time. The way that you can tell your intensity is you can get what's called your target heart rate zone. And I gave you the formula to calculate that. So you can calculate how hard your heart rate should be working while you're exercising. It does require you to take your pulse while you're exercising um, and count you know, for a period of time. But it gives you an idea. On a lot of exercise pieces of equipment, you know, you can grab onto the handles and it'll give you your heart rate. You can do that as well. But a lot of times people don't like to mess with that. And if you're on any kind of medication for your heart that alters your heart rate, it doesn't work for you. You more need to use what's on the back. That's called this RPE scale. And I recommend this for almost everybody because we often, we rate things all the time. When people give us a survey, they want us to rate stuff. So you just have to get in the habit of rating yourself and how you feel. Uh, so where you'd want to be, that's what this use of RPE is. You want to have a rating of somewhere between four and six, typically. That's about moderate activity. So it's not at a nine. You know, a lot of times people, you know, they think that they have to work out at a nine in order to get benefit. It's usually a four to six. I would say that the activity, depending those squats, are probably around a three. You know, some, so you, if you bump it up just a little bit, you're going to be in your four. Um, if anybody runs or does cycling or some of those swimming, you're probably more this four to six, seven to eight range just automatically because you're, it, that's the demand it puts on your body. But you can easily just, if you're walking up a hill, just ask yourself, how hard does this feel to me right now? And it always works. Even if you get in better shape, your, your numbers, your, your ability to do it just kind of changes. But the numbers will always work. So I always recommend that one to people. Um, or, but if you like numbers, because some people really like to know their numbers, right? Like, I want to know if my heart rate is this, then the target heart rate is a good one for you to use. And you can start rating it. Another thing is, is if you compare the two, so you have your target heart rate, and you rate yourself, and then you look to see where those are, once you get really good at rating yourself, almost always your heart rate will be at that number, because you know how you feel. So it becomes just a process of learning to listen to your body and know how you feel. All right, we might skip this torso one, just because I, we kind of did it with the sitting. We're running out of time. Um, this next one, these are just, a, this is kind of what we did today. 
So we didn't do the archer back. We'll do that one. We'll kind of put that in with this chair yoga. So again, everybody sit away from your chair or your back away from the back of the chair. And you are just going to mimic me as if I was sitting. So your hands are going to start down at your side. You're going to take a deep breath in and reach your hands up. And reach them so, so you're pulling your shoulders away. So now what you're going to do is forward fold in your chair. So you're going to come here and just arch your back. And kind of reach your either hands forward or down toward your toes. Place your hands on your thighs and push yourself up. Arch your back up, chest goes out, and then if you want to, your hands can go out to the side. And then bring them forward, give yourself a hug, pull your shoulder blades apart. Open them back up, chest goes up. And now other hand goes on top, same thing. And bring it back up. Reach those hands up. Take one hand down, whichever one you want, and then reach yourself to the side. Keep those abdominals in nice and tight. And then switch sides. And release that. One more time, deep breath up. Inhale as much as you can. And exhale. Good. See, that wasn't so bad, huh? So what? What that was is it, it's just a series of, it's, it's not really, you could call it chair yoga, but it's just basically moving your body through ranges of motion. Whatever feels good, because does this one feel good to people? It just feels good. And we have that available to us every moment of our day, but we don't do it. For whatever reason, we, we just don't do it. So this I gave you is an example of how you might be able to put some of this stuff into your day. Now, obviously, the times may be different for you because I don't know what your work schedules are. But every hour you are doing something. Every hour you're doing either a cat and a cow. This is what cat-cow is called. Um, or you're bending to the side. Or you're doing squats. You're doing jumping jacks. But you set something for yourself. And you can set little timers if you have Fitbits or whatever that it can tell you, you know, when you can do these things. And by the end of your day, you have done so much activity that maybe you didn't do before. So it's not, it is something that we all can do. We just have to be mindful of doing it and give ourselves reminders. So, um, you know, you can do stuff like that because that makes it fun too. You hold each other accountable and you, you kind of razz each other. So that's good. Uh, and then the 10 minutes is if you walk at lunch or if you climb stairs. I don't know. Are there stairs? There's lots of stairs, so you can climb stairs. That's a great activity. Um, just, you know, if you're not used to climbing stairs, don't do 50 sets in one day because you will be really sore and tired. But, you, you know, you can do that kind of stuff. Refill your water bottle. Well, I don't know about it. <laughs> Drink water, that's what I'm saying here. Uh, and then I'd like to end with this quote. Wow, I really regret that workout, said no one ever. Never ever has anybody said, even when they feel terrible when they come in, have they ever said that. They don't usually regret it. So know that going into it. You can tell yourself, this is going to be good for me, even if I don't feel like doing it right at this moment. Thank you.